Welcome to CATS Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be solving practice problem 3.3. Now, the question says we should find V and I. So, V is across the 3 ohm resistor, and I is across the 2 ohm resistor. So, now I labeled the, these two nodes as V1 and V2 for convenience. Um, so, let's, let's start solving the problem. But if you look at the problem from the start, you will see that between V1 and V2, you have a voltage source. And now, what's going to happen here is this. So if you have a voltage source between two nodes and there's nothing else, then you're going to form something called a supernode. All right? You're going to form a supernode. So instead of having two equations for the separate nodes, this whole thing becomes one node, all right? And that is basically what a supernode is. So here's how we treat supernodes. So you look at which node is on the positive uh, terminal of the voltage source, so it's V2. So between these two nodes, we have nine volts. So V2 minus V1 will give you nine volts, which is the voltage between these two. And that is basically the definition of potential difference or voltage. So the voltage between two points. So between V2, so we start at the positive terminal. So between V2 and V1, we have nine volts. So let's write that. So V2 minus V1 is equal to nine. And this is gonna help us to solve the problem, right? So now let's form the equation of our super node. So all of this is taken as one node. And so we're gonna have V1 minus going that way. So we're going to have V1 minus 21. So we're going to have V1 minus 21 divided by the resistor value of 4, which is in this path here, right? Then we're going to have, so V, this V, is the same as V1. So V, so V1 is equal to V. Because if you say V1 minus 0, that's where you get V. So V1 is across the 3 ohms. So let's write the equation for that. So we're going to say plus V1. One, which is the same as V, plus V1 divided by 3, because we say V1 minus 0 divided by 3, we have V1 over 3. And on this side of the super node, we're going to say V2 divided by 2. So I is equal to V2 divided by 2. If we can just look, if we say V2 minus 0 divided by 2, we have V2 over 2. And that is the relationship between V2 and I. So this V2 is going to help us find I. Now, finally, so we have plus V2 divided by 2. And now, finally, we have V2 divided by 6 equals to 0, which is the current going here. Right? So now, let's simplify this and solve for V1 and V2, and then finally solve for I. So multiplying through by 12, right? Let's use 12. So 3 V1 negative 60. 3 plus uh, 4 V1 plus 6 V2 plus 2 V2 is equal to 0. Simplify further, we're going to have 7 V1. We're going to have 8 V2, right? 8 V2. And that is going to be equals to um, 63 on the other side of the equation, right? And so we know that the uh, V2 minus V1 is equal to 9 from up here. So we can just manipulate that to be V2 is equal to 9 plus V1. All right? We can just manipulate that into that. So we'll substitute this V2 wherever we see V2 here. So it's going to be 7 V1 plus 8 uh, multiplied by 9 plus V1 is equal to 63. And so we're going to have 7 V1 plus 72 plus 8 V1 is equal to 63. Adding these two, we're going to have 15 V1 is equal to um, 63 minus 72, which is negative 9. Right? So V1 is equal to negative 9 over 15. So negative 9 over 15, if you put that in your calculator, you get negative 0 0.6 volts. Right? So we said V1 is equals to V, which is basically the voltage across there. So V, we now have V. So V is essentially equals to negative 0 0.6 volts. Right. 
So now, given this V, we can substitute it back in this equation. So V2 is equals to 9 plus V1, and we found V1 to be negative 0 0.6. So V2 is equals to 9 minus 0 0.6, and your answer is 8.4 volts, right? So that's V2. And this V2 is going to help us to find I, because I is equals to V2 over 2. So I is equals to 8.4 divided by 2, which is basically equals to 4. 0.2 amperes. And that is how you solve this problem.